Hello everyone again, my name is Chris Morn, and uh, right now we're walking through the uh, configuration of RIP version 2. Um, this is a CCNA level practice lab. Um, I would call this a comprehensive lab, and this is one that I did back when I was first learning uh, RIP version 2. And this is basically a test of the uh, basic ability to configure a router and RIP version 2 to enable communications between themselves and all the other subnets involved. As you can see here, we have a, a topology involving an, an ISP router, which we will configure. None of these have been configured or even turned on. Um, we have uh, loopback interfaces, which will um, simulate uh, private network spaces that each of these routers are using to interconnect to each other. And uh, we are also using a, a, a single slash 24 address space that has been subnetted to allow these, um, with the exception of the ISP. Now, uh, first thing we need to do is uh, initially understand this topology and uh, get a, a basic goal of what we have here. Um, so a, a, a standard goal that you want to have, just, just as something that you should know if you're ever designing things from scratch, is uh, you want to designate uh, one side of the serial connection as a DCE and that will be the side that carries the clock rate and the other side does not need to have a clock rate. Um, that side will also be the side that has the first address in the point-to-point um, -point subnet that you give it. Um, you always want to identify the routing protocol being used and um, you just want to make sure that your subnetting is correct and it is cohesive and that there aren't any holes in it because that will throw you off in the middle of the configuration but at the same time if you do mess up it's the best learning experience you can have um, and we will also have a public web server which is the goal is to have all of these routers be able to reach that public web server um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on all these routers and I'm gonna jump back with you once they are up and running okay Let's begin by defining our objectives for this lab. Our first goal is to review basic router configurations. That's things that we should always do on all of the routers all the time. We want to configure RIP version 2 and test it. We also want to configure static and default routing in places it needs to be configured to allow connectivity to run throughout the network. And then we will need to verify connectivity and troubleshoot any problems we encounter along the way. So I have router 3 right here and uh, we're going to run through the things that we need to go through in order to make these um, routers normally uh, well configured for Cisco. That includes things like changing the host name, but personally I'm fine with the router 3 host name. Um, configure and enable secret password, so we get to configure, uh, enable configure terminal, enable secret, it's just going to make it Cisco, so that's that. Um, we want to configure a mesh of the day banner, so you do that with the uh, I believe it's banner, message of the day, we'll use the at sign, and uh, we'll just go ahead and do a couple of these and, you know, authorized access only, a couple more of these, and the at sign, and that will do that. Um, line configurations, so we want to make sure we can telnet to this um, router, so we go line VTY04. We want to set up a password. Oh, what did we forget? Before we do that, we want to make sure that that password is not entered in clear text. So we want to use service password encryption. Now we can go into line VTY and then do password. We'll do Cisco as well. And the login command to make sure that it is required. Um, that is uh, another thing we can do. This is optional, is do the um, uh, what is it called? I believe it's the no IP domain lookup. Yeah, that makes it so that if I type in mumble jumbo by accident, if I mistype a command, it does not try and look it up as a host name. And that's basically all you need for initial um, router configurations. I'm going to go ahead and do that in all the routers really quickly, and uh, we'll pick up then. Okay, so once you have all of them configured with their defaults of just how a router can be a router, we're going to go ahead and configure their interfaces. And for time's sake, I'm going to do the most complicated one, router one, and hopefully you can go through and do the uh, the rest of them. I'll also show you how to do the ISP. Um, so you'll need to do router two and three on your own. So with router one, we have uh, four interfaces we really need to configure. 
Um, the first one, just for simplicity's sake, is going to be that 192.168.1.0 slash 26 address. And we're going to simulate that with a loopback address. So we're going to go into a uh, configure terminal, which we already are, to interf interface loopback 0. Type an IP address, 192.168.1.1. And the slash 26 address, which is 255.255.192. Do a no shut. And uh, that's all for that. Also, note you don't have to do a no shut on the loopback interfaces, they're always up no matter what, but it's a good habit to get into. Um, the next interface that we can do uh, is going to go ahead and be the uh, first serial interface. Um, so that would be a S00. So let's go ahead and go to interface S00. And um, this, is, this is the DTE end of the ring. So that means two things. One, I don't have to set a clock rate. And two, it's going to be the second address in that slash 30 subnet. So that's the 252 slash 30. So it's IP address is going to be IP address 192.168.1.254 slash 32 or 30 address you do have to don't shut that one and then once that one's done we can go to the next serial interface which will be 01 so the IP address sorry if we have to change the interface one that's 01 IP address 192.168.1.244 Sorry, 245, because it's the first one in that address. Um, because because it's the DCE end of the ring, and so we're going to give it the first IP address, and of course, a slash 30 subnet mask. Now this is the DCE end, so we have to give it the clock rate. So with the clock rate, I'm just going to give it 9600. You can give it a ton of different things, just look. And in fact, we'll do 6400, just as an example. 64,000. And then you can do the no shut command. And if we wanted to, um, we could pick an encapsulation, but the default of HDLC is going to be fine for this example. And now we're going to configure the one that goes to our ISP. So that's going to be interface S02. And this IP address is going to be 209. Dot Actually, I think I typoed that. <laughs> One moment. 168, yeah. 209.168.201.2. .201 it's going to be a slash 30. Now again, DC, this is the DTE end, so we do not need the clock rate commands. Just no shut it. And that's going to bother me if I don't fix that. There we go. So go back up into router 1, and um, that's basically the interface commands. Now we're going to go into our um, router commands. If you just give me one moment. I lost, uh, I lost my recording software. Where did it go? Oh, it's gone. It just completely disappeared. There it is. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is exit the interface config mode and go into router rip. Now, we're going to need to do a couple of basic things. We're going to have to configure version 2 and the no auto summary command, because obviously we used VLSM, which is variable length subnet masks, because we subnetted the slash 24 address space that was given to us for private addressing. So now that we have that configured, we can go ahead and add in our uh, address space. Now, RIP does not allow you the ability to put in a subnet mask when you do the network. It just kind of broadcasts what the interfaces are. Um, so all we have to do is the network 192.168.1.0 command. And watch, that's all, that's all you can use. So hit enter, and uh, that should go out there. And um, we're not going to have the ISP to rip, 
So what I want you guys to do is go through router 2 and 3 and finish that configuration and then I'll go ahead and configure the ISP. Okay, you should have them all configured now. Um, once you have that done, let's go ahead and, and verify. So let's go into router 1 and do a couple of commands like show IP route. Now in here we can see all of the routes that router 1 knows about. It knows it has you know, the slash 26 address that's attached to router 2, and it knows about the slash 26 address that's attached to router 3, and of course it knows about itself. Um, so that is just about as basic as I can get to it. Um, the, uh, the next thing you want to do is from router 1, can you ping these two subnets, because that was the goal of this. So we can ping 192.168.1.129. Yes, you can. Can you ping 192.168.1.65? Yes, you can. Now let's repeat this process with router 2. Show IP route. Make sure they're in there. And they are. So let's go ahead and ping 192.168.1.1. Ping 192.168.1.129. So far, so good. And router 3, ping 192.168.1.1. Ping 192.168.1.65. Okay, so our RIP is currently working properly. And we have configured that and tested that, so this is good. Um, now let's go ahead and configure our ISP. Actually, I think I already had that one open. I did. Um, and uh, really simple configurations. You want to go interface 000 and give it the IP address that it needs. 209.168.201.1 slash 30. It's the DCE, so clock, rate. 6400,000, sorry, and a no shut. We want to exit, and uh, then we want to confirm that I can get to the other end. So 209.168.201.2. Oh, it's not. There you go. It takes a little while for the clock rates to sync. Um, so now that we have tested that, we uh, do have a bit of a problem. The uh, public web server, which we'll make right now, I'm just using a uh, loopback address to um, simulate it. Um, the public web server uh, cannot be reached by router one. Why is that? Well, it's because router 1 does not know a way to get there. So the easiest way to configure that, because we know that web server is out there, is uh, we can make a, uh, a, a sorry a, a static route. And uh, hold on, I think I have my terminology mixed. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the ISP has a way of getting back to the uh, the RIP network. Can we do that with a um, IP route 0.0.0.0? .0 this is the default route. And we're going to send it out um, to the next hop of 209.168.201.2. So now any and all IP addresses that need to be sent somewhere that it doesn't have an explicit route to will be sent to that address. But router 1 still does not know how to get to the public web server. So let's go ahead and make a static route for that. Let's do IP route 209.165.202.129. IP with a mask of that, and it's going to go out its serial 02 so that interface. Let's be confined to figure terminal IP route. 209.165.202.129 Okay. I'm almost out of time, so can it ping it? Yes. 209.165.202.129 It can. I'll, I'll tell you right now, the other routers can't, and that's because we need to use this command. Default information originate. 
and that will send that route to all the other routers. As you can see here, it works. Thank you all. Bye.